presentation to you, I showed you the way how I teach. Well, you can decide for yourself whether it was fun or not, whether it was engaging or not, whether it was creative or not. I think I provide you with some tangible experience what teaching is for me. Now today, I would like to tell you about how I perceive education. I know that this, uh, um, the name of the topic, how to make language learning meaningful and creative, is basically what we have to do. What's the meaning of not only language learning, but any, lang uh, any learning, any education? What's the, what's the point of it? Um, so I would like to share my ideas with you, and I would like to show you what teaching is to me. And if I can get anyone from you, even one person inspired to try teaching out, although you have never tried it before, and I believe that there are many among you who haven't tried it before, um, we will, I, will be, I will be happy and satisfied. So, um, I'm not going to talk about myself, because I think your need should rather talk for you, not you about yourself. So, um, I would like to talk about you, about children, about other things. And if you have any questions about me, you can ask me at the end of this presentation. And one more thing, I would really, really appreciate it if we could have this as a discussion, okay? So I don't want to be just talking and talking. I want to get your opinion. At least raise your hands, please, by asking to any kind of cooperation. Into it, and we will cover today. What will we cover? Let's take a look. Um, we will talk about what is holding you back. We will find we will find the meaning and get it done. We will talk about creativity and teaching or learning where to start. Maybe now doesn't make sense, but I'm going to start with my first question. And please. Ooh. We can go to the next slide. <laughs> ah, here it is. How many of you students in training are already teaching? By teaching, I mean gaining any kind of experience with working with children, adults, teenagers, grandmas, grandpas, it doesn't matter. Your cousins, anything. Your What did you guys have? I trained uh, football. You trained football? Okay, as a coach. Yeah. Excellent. What about you? Hockey. Hockey, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Okay, what about you? Uh, I was teaching my mom's life. Teaching how to play cards? Good. Good. <laughs> how, did, how did it go? Well. Was it fun? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. Right. Any kind of experience. Excellent. Perfect. Perfect. So, now, I assume. I, I, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, please don't, uh, raise your hand who is not here from me among you, who is not in a training to become a teacher. So, somebody who is not theoretically should become a teacher. So, anybody are students of pedagogy? Okay, Emma, you're going to be a teacher. <laughs> you're going to be a teacher. <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to study. Okay, good. So, thank you very much. Now, uh, Where's my slide? Slide there. <laughs> okay. So, um, some of you raised your hands who have some experience, but the majority of you didn't. So my question is, what is holding you back? What is holding you back from trying out? Look, she told her mother. What is holding you back? Okay. Can anybody tell me some? Examples, it doesn't have to be about you, but what do you think? What can hold some of you back from being maybe stress of not being successful? Stress of not being successful. Successful in what? What do you mean success? How do you? Maybe the children thought that you are a bad teacher or something like that. Okay, so, I'm so, so stress that I will not teach them anything. And then I will look silly and dumb 
and useless. Yes. Oh, I felt that. Oh. What else? Excellent. What else? What do you think? You don't have to talk about yourself. Maybe you can point at your friend. He's not good for you because. <laughs> Lack of self confidence. Very good. That's. Uh huh. Uh, what makes mistakes can you make as a teacher? Mm -hmm. Look, we've got amazing teachers here. Have they? Did they make? Did they make or have they made mistakes today? No. <laughs> no. That's it. That's it. That's a judgment. But let's be let's be critical. Okay, we are on a on a field of academy, and I respect them. But obviously, I made mistakes. They make mistakes. Elenka makes mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. So if this is going to be holding me back, I don't know. But thank you very much. Because I think you're absolutely right. But what I think is not important. What, what you think is important. What else can hold to me back? Money. <laughs> what is holding you back from teaching? Your time schedule. Your time schedule. Time schedule. <laughs> okay. Do you have only lessons? In the afternoon or in the morning? Okay, when would you like? Okay, you? And what do you study? And your schedule is holding you back from teaching? No, sure. schedule, but time table schedule overall. Oh, overall. Good. All right. Thank you. That was a good idea. Or as I think it was an honest, obvious point. Right? Okay, good. So I thought about this. If I was a student, because I was a student actually, well, as you see, I'm only a bachelor, so I'm not, maybe I'm less successful in my studies than uh, many of you. But regardless, I've spent how many years at the university? Seven years. <laughs> yeah. And I was not able to finish it, Jesus. And I'm talking here today. Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay, please. I, I, I'm, not, I'm pointing at you. So what is holding you back? What I think, what, hold, hold, what held me back from doing it? Um, we can, we can, what? Lack of time. That's one of the reasons I think you're right. Low wages. I mean, salary, the money you get. I'm gonna be, what? I'm supposed to teach for five years, for seven years, for 10 years? A 20 years, maybe, I want to consider it. So wages. Is, do you think that wages might be a thing? Yeah. Some. I'm not saying the only one. Okay, next. The year. There you go. Lack of meaning. We are going to be talking about meaning today. So, lack of meaning. <laughs> <laughs> I never ever assume that anyone from these students, a remarkable people here, is lazy. <laughs> Just being here shows how interested. I did you No way. Okay. okay well, well, which paper am I supposed to sign? It is it. By the way, they have to sign some papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. All right. So let's talk about laziness because we're not going to spend a lot of time with it. But I want to. Show you what my opinion, if somebody says, well, I'm lazy, okay, good, fair enough. I'm lazy sometimes, well, I can't be because my two children are continuously jumping on my back, so I can't be lazy. So let's, let's, let's see. Being lazy is disrespectful to those who believe in you. And I think that in each one of you, there's a person who believes in you. And if you are going to be lazy, well, from time to time, but I think this is one of the things that you need to think about when you're lazy. Lazy, just Now I have some quotations here and I want to show you. Lazy people are full of excuses and will say anything to avoid taking action. I'm not assuming that anyone of you is a kind of person like this, but people say that this might be, oh, I'm lazy. No, actually, I'm not lazy, I'm just too busy. I'm overwhelmed. I'm tired. Did I have practice today? How am I, so, how am I supposed to have energy? Okay. Anthony Robbins said, people are not lazy. 
and simply have impotent goals. That is, goals that do not inspire them. What I think about laziness, you make your own decision, please. Lack of meaning. Lack of meaning. Because we're talking about meaningful, meaningfulness in le learning. If you want to make language learning meaningful for your student, you have to find the meaning for yourself first. Why do I want to do it? What do you think? What is my reason why I'm doing what I'm doing? I speak four languages. I've lived abroad. I have several bartending courses in Italy. I've got several courses from other fields. Why am I doing this? This makes me a millionaire? Do you think enjoyment. this is one? Enjoyment, love, talk. Uh, sometimes. Uh, sometimes because <laughs> I am desperate. Sometimes because I, I have a lot of fear in me. And the only way how I can cope with this is that I'm trying, I'm trying to teach other people to be more open-minded, more critical. And I'm starting with children. And I will tell you a very short story about this. In 2008, I came back from Italy. I worked there for two years, and I started my studies again. I studied physical education and English language from 2004. I left because I, had, I saw no... Do you, have you ever had this moment when you went to an exam, you failed, and you went outside, <laughs> and you heard your friend say, were you able to copy? Were you able to copy? Yeah, I copied everything. And once this happened to me, I was like, what the heck is this all about? What is this about? Copying, it just, at a moment I said, forget about it, this is not for me. So after two years of studying physical education and English language, I said, ah, I need to get out of here. So, in 2008 I came back, because my mother was calling me all the time, when are you going to finish your university? Like, leave me alone. Is this the point? Is the diploma the point? The paper, is this, I think you've heard it, huh? <laughs> so I came back and I said, I'm going to do it for myself. Okay, good. I started teaching in 2008. I taught for two years. And it was great. It was fun. I taught adults. Brilliant. And then I wanted to challenge myself because I thought I was a fantastic teacher. Two years of experience, huh? <laughs> ah, look at me. So I said, I want to challenge myself. How would you challenge yourself if you wanted to have some experience with the adults? How would you challenge yourself? What do you think would be challenging for you? Those who teach. Kids? Kids? Do you think kids are challenging? Okay. Anything else? Kindergarten. Kindergarten kids? Mm -hmm. All oh, students with difficulties. Now what about what about old people? Hmm? What, what about what about old people? So what I did, I went to Kokochina and I went to um, two, um, I don't know, uh, uh, care, senior, senior houses, yes. Once I was afraid to get in, and you know, I didn't know what to do. And with the other one, the one which is off of it, Matita Solenska, there's a huge one. And um, uh, I went there and I met the director, she was outside. And she's like, hey, can I help you? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to um, uh, teach uh, old people English. And she's like, come on, come have a walk with me. So I had a walk with her, we were talking. And she's like, she's like, why do you want to do it? I told her. She's like, uh, Miroslav, um, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I want to challenge myself. I want to show that I can do it. She's like, but with these people, they are about to leave. They are finishing their life. Why do you want to spend the energy? you have in them. And I was like, they deserve it. But they don't, they don't deserve it. But they are less than me. So yeah, I was disappointed. I left. And then I started uh, thinking, and I'm sorry that uh, Dr. Ka, uh, Dr. Ka, is not here, because at the lesson of uh, uh, 
children's literature, we, we were like as many as you, translators and, uh, and, and, and teachers, and we were talking about books, Winnie the Pooh, the good old Winnie the Pooh, black and white, and then how colors come in, and I thought about manipulation. I thought about how, how children are about being manipulated. When I went to a, a pharmacy and I saw all these vitamins and all these things and, and what, we got all the cars and, and, and all the funky things for children just to get them attached to them. And I thought, there's manipulation everywhere. And, I, and we were talking and I, and I wanted to do something. So I said to the guys, hey guys, you're all teachers. How many of you teach? Not many. Why don't we create, why don't we make a summer camp for children? I have never been to a summer camp. I didn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Kahir Ritskova told me that said, Mir Miroslav, if you're going to make a summer camp, I'm going to help you. In two weeks time, I had a paper. This is, the, this is one week of your time in the summer, and I would like you to come. She was like, what? Okay, so that's how I started. And that's when I started teaching children. And, and why am I doing what I'm doing? Because it gives me hope that maybe one of those children, and I saw Maria, I was today like, Whoa. and I'm not surprised she was there. It was obvious from the first moment I saw that girl. She was super intelligent, super smart. So I do what I do because I sometimes feel, have fear in the future of what's going to come. And I think. We need to be as one. We need to care of each other. And teaching is about that. It's about compassion. Because you cannot be a teacher if you don't have compassion. If you can't put yourself into my shoes. Come. You scared? you want to make language learning meaningful for your students, you have to find the meaning in yourself. Whatever that meaning is, I don't know. I'm going to help you with Mr. Einstein. See, that was a clever guy. That was a, that was a clever guy. Education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned at school. So whatever you think, what I'm going to teach, what I'm going to teach, what I'm going to teach, they will forget that. Well, if you're an ordinary teacher, or maybe a bad teacher, but if you're a good teacher, you might keep something, or they might retain something from what you said. Let's have another one. That is, this is, this is J. Krishnamurti. I assume you have no idea who he is. Well, if you want, take a look. But there is no end to education. That's what he says, what he said. It is not that you write a book, pass an examination, and finish with education. The whole of life, from the moment you are born to the moment you die, is a process of learning. All the time, even now, you're learning. And there's one more. Pablo Picasso. I thought he was many, many years ago. <laughs> the meaning of life is to find your gift, and the purpose of life is to give it away. And I will tell you why I chose this one. I had a friend from Ireland who talked with me, and we were talking about happiness, or the meaning of life. And he's like, the meaning of life is to be happy. And I was like, ah, I don't know, maybe. Well, talk to people in Palestine, talk to people in Ukraine, talk to people who are abused, talk to people who have all kinds of problems, who are born sick. Is it about happiness? I don't know. For me, the meaning, is, the meaning of life is to be useful, to be useful for others. And if you are useful for others, then my dream is those people will give you positive energy. And I don't want to talk about energy. Yeah, I don't want to be spiritual or whatever. Maybe they will be useful to you. But mainly, if you are helping other ones, other, other people, and make them happy, then I think that just a part of it, it sticks with you. And the happiness comes with it. But it's, I would say it's a byproduct. It's not, it's not what life is about. Otherwise, what's the meaning? You, you women, with all my respect,
that my, my, my wife uh, gave me or gave to the world two children, two boys. I mean, that's some deal of suffering you have to undergo there. <laughs> and I com completely changed me, the way how I saw how she was coping with the whole situation. And it was very tough for her, because it was very hard. So, but it, did it make her happy? And, and, and she told me the meaning of her life is to give, give birth. Well, so, so if you find the meaning, give it away. If you find the meaning why you want to teach, give it away. It doesn't matter to whom. Just give it away. Don't keep it for yourself. I was keeping it for myself for many years. I was saying, I speak so much. Give English, Italian, even some German. Ha 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 ha. I'm going to be the union force. I'm going to be a work, super work labor force and I'm going to be the best. Uh, ah, no. Give it away. Fear. That was one of the reasons. Don't let your fear, uh, don't let your fear of what can happen make nothing happen. Yeah, you might be, uh, um, what did you say, lack of confidence. Lack of confidence again means fear. And you imagine many bad things that can happen and majority of them will. So, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Oh, I can't teach these children. It's too difficult. Have you ever thought how children work? What they do? How they learn? Because if you pay attention to them, they will open you something you can understand. And then fear goes away. And there's another one, I like this one. You can fear, F-E-A-R, has two meanings. Forget everything and run. Because it's like, I don't think I can't do this. Or face everything and run. That's what we do. That's all. Money. Mmm, crispy dollar bills. Or, I don't know how long we got to keep physical money. Maybe so, so soon it's going to be crypto and digital. So many zeros of my account. <laughs> Let's go. So, what is more valuable to a university student, to you, money or experience? What do you need more now? I know. I know that's that. I know. I know. I know it's a uh, hard. But can you raise uh, with your hands, please, those of you who, for whom is experience more important than money? And by the way, excuse me. I know that not each one of us are in the same financial conditions. Everybody has different, different life conditions, but can you sh just raise your hands for whom experience is more important than money? Especially while you're, while you're students, yeah? I'm not talking about life, yeah? Do you have a loan? Do you have a loan? Okay, thank you very much, thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's talk about money and investment and experience. Invest in yourself, skills, are worth more than a good job, career, money, and even reputation. Why? The world always needs people who can do something well. Give me the first. Teaching children football. Perfect. Perfect. I want. I dreamt to become a, a, a teacher. I really dreamt. I wanted to be an uh, a coach. I played football for like ten years of my life, and I loved it. I hated going to Nitra. <gasps> I hated going to Nitra. Because we were, <laughs> but but why? Because I'm from Sturovo, and whenever we, whenever we came up, we were the. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing was that I was the only Slovak in the team, <laughs> and I was the captain, and we were like. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to be truly successful, invest in yourself to get the knowledge you need to find your unique factor. When you find it, and focus on it, and persevere, your success will blossom. So, I don't know, you can be chasing money, or you can invest on the things you love. Maybe he's not gonna be a coach forever. Maybe he's not gonna be a coach forever. But I bet, I bet you that the experience that they're gonna get, and what the, 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 the players are gonna teach them, is gonna be way more than the money they're getting right now. And, very important, compare these two pictures, please. What do you think is the difference? 
Bang, bang. I think all of you can do this. How many of you can do that? And what do you think? Um, in this process that's happening now, I'm not saying she's not learning. She might be learning some great skills. What skills can she be learning right now? What? To be a hamburger. To be a hamburger. Is that all? Is Business. That all she's learning? Business. Business? Okay. What else is she learning right now? Patience. Excuse me? Patience. Patience? Okay. Come on! I need those burgers! Come on! Give me those burgers! Patience. <laughs> the machine is too slow. <laughs> the machine is broken. <laughs> okay, yeah. So what is she learning? Well, I don't know if patience, but it must be patience because okay. if you but if you put the fries into the oil and it's not hot enough, you need patience. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, what else is she learning? Physical endurance. Physical endurance. Endurance, yeah. Standing there for eight hours. Well, if you work for McDonald's, I think you can choose the time you spend there. So I'm not, you know, neglecting this work. It's, it's, it's an experience. It's great. What about this one? What do you think? What, is, she, what, is, what is this feature here? What is she learning? What? Empathy. 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 When a girl starts to cry. Patience. I lost the game. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would show you a video, but I can't GDPR. But I would show you a video about <laughs> one boy. I would show you when he he went under under the under the table. He started kicking around. The, Took the Steve's book, threw it on the floor. He was like, I hate this, I hate this. And I, I recorded it, I was like. <laughs> bad days. Well, <laughs> well so we had several bad days, but now, and, and I, can't, I can't tell you who that was, but you've seen him. That's it. That's it. I'm not going to say anything more, okay? I'm not going to say anything more, but you've seen him, okay? That's all. Okay. So she's learning empathy. Anything else? Playfulness. 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 Psychology. Patience. Patience. Didactic. Didactics. Communication. Communication. Solving problems. Solving problems. And what do you think? Is she ever under stress? Yes. Yeah. And I think. And what do you think? Which stress is worse? Uh, is is worse? When a, when a child is crying and, sh and, and shouting, or a, you know, a, the fries are not about to get done. You can the machine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, there's so many advantages. There's so many advantages. Okay, so, so that's it, all right? So I'm, I'm gonna move on. So you see the difference. But time, 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 time. Don't have enough time. Oh, I'm just too busy. What they think very said, the lack of time is actually lack of priority. If teaching is not your priority, then forget. You have different priorities. But as a student of education, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to take some experience. Lack of direction, not lack of time, is the problem. We all have 24 hours a day. And listen, I'm talking about time, I'm not the best example, right? Uh, I was doing this presentation at uh, what? 2.30. 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, good. So I'm not the best example, but this was my priority. You were my priority. And I, I, I was a little bit late because I was finishing. <laughs> so we said we will cover what is holding you back. So if any of these things that I mentioned, you know, the lack of, what was that? Time, money, not enough money, meaning, laziness, laziness. laziness. Fear. fear, fear. If any of these is in your head, maybe I, maybe I, I hope I help a little bit. Just to think about it. Just move, start moving those wheels in your head. Okay, so um, we went to, and now find the meaning and get and get it done. I chose the word get on purpose. So let's see. Find the meaning and get it done.
get out of your comfort zone. Many of us, well, I'm not talking to those who are teaching or who teach, okay? But those who still are waiting for it, um, you will never know whether you can do it, or you will never know whether you're gonna, uh, you know, gain anything from it if you don't step out of it. If you're gonna stay in your comfort zone, I would say that's the most dangerous place you can be. In. Get to know your students and their needs or expectations. This will be another thing we will talk about. Meet the students' needs and get them motivated. Use creativity and get them to learn more. And let them use the knowledge you provided them to get what they inspire for. So if we want to have meaning, this is what is meaning in education for me. Not all, but the majority. And I'm going to explain to you in detail what I'm talking about. Please. So get out of your comfort zone. You can see, that's your comfort zone. Here, nice and cozy. Don't get me. I'm here. Lack of self-confidence, fear zone, uh, find excuses, be affected by others' opinion. What you gonna think of me? I like Jacob, he did it. And he didn't care what you know anybody's gonna think of it. He did it. He became a bear. He became a bear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we've got the fear zone, yeah? Which which, which won't allow us. Then we've got the learning zone. Deal with challenges and problems. Uh, acquire new skills. Extend your comfort zone. This is where you learn. This is the nice one. And then comes the best. Then you grow. Because from learning, you grow. So when you're going to teach and your students are going to learn, they're going to grow with you. And it doesn't matter if it's going to be for one week. It doesn't matter if it's going to be for five months or five years or whatever, you need to do your job the best you can at the moment, and that's it. Get out of your comfort zone. Coming out of your comfort zone is tough <coughs> in the beginning. Chaotic in the middle, and awesome in the end. Because in the end, it shows you a whole new world. Make an attempt, just try it, okay? And this is about the money. Here's an e uh, equation I want you to remember for the rest of your life. Comfort zone equals wealth zone. It means your comfort zone equals to your wealth zone. By expanding your comfort zone, you will expand the size of your income and wealth zo zone. Now, let's say how many, how many uh, teams do you coach? Two, right now. If you are going to become better, and you're going to be more devoted, and you're going to teach or train, excuse me, or coach, not two teams, but six teams, is it, possi is it possible time-wise? No. No, currently. Yes. But when you finish? I don't think, because I want to, I want to teach all I know, just one team, and they will be perfect, instead of teaching six teams and they and if you are going to be superb because you're going to learn from the children and they are going to be better because they learn thanks to you will the parents will be willing to support you do you think yes. will the parents will be to support you to have a better life yes and by stepping out of your comfort zone working on yourself you are increase your proficiency your skills your qualification and that obviously increases your value and people, when they see value, they're willing to pay for it. So, that's also together with the comfort zone, right? Let's go. Uh, so the first one was get out of your comfort zone. Now we're gonna talk about get to know your students and their needs or expectations. Um, excuse me, I forgot my Ukrainian friend, I forgot your name. Yeah? Okay. Artem. Uh, you were asking about get to, you know how to approach, how to start teaching, what to do, what to do. Yesterday you asked Richard, right? Yeah. So get to know your students and their needs or expectations. It doesn't matter if you're gonna learn uh, teach a child, or you're gonna teach an adult, or an adolescent, or an old person. 
or even with your grandpas, you can talk in English about things, and you can teach them things, things, things they like, maybe some stuff in the garden. Yeah. But they're gonna enjoy it. So, but more than anything, people want to be heard and understood. It's like, oh, how do I, how do I, how do I, how do I to do? You know, how do I to start? If you want, if you have new, this is my new school. <laughs> what do you think? Am I, should I approach her like, help, I'm the best in the world? You're going to get all you decide from me. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a teacher, I'm a teacher. Eh? But if I'm going to be talking about myself, I've achieved this, I've achieved this, and this, and this, and this. Will, will she really be fascinated by me? No. Well, I might think she's fascinated by me. But if I ask her, do you want to learn English? No, I'm not learning. <laughs> Not with this attitude. What's the problem? Okay. <laughs> no, again, what's the problem with You're me? You're feeling self-confident. I don't like it. Ah, okay. Sorry. Okay, good. Sorry. Let it go. <laughs> but if I ask, would you like to learn English? Yes, I would like. Why? What do you need English for? Teaching during holidays, for example. Oh, holidays? Yeah. How, how often? And I am much more... Uh, oh, maybe how often do you go? How often do you go? Okay, once a year. <laughs> once a year? But, but for example, I, I want to... Is that going to work? No. Ah, it's not going to work. They 
before we learned a lot of, a lot of, uh, for example, you, adults. You can be sitting here for 45 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes, 70 minutes, and you can listen to a talk. You can follow, my, follow me if I'm good enough to interact with you. Can a three and five year old sit here for 45 minutes? And I would, I, if I had my two sons here, they would be all over the place and they would be gone. But what's that? <laughs> Excavator! <laughs> Why? What they, what you have and they don't have, what they have and you don't have anymore, they have a very short attention span. They can't focus on a long, for a long time. And why do you have, <laughs> and the funny how I've done my video, why do you have, you can have a longer attention span? Because you don't have to be focusing all the time at me. You'll be like, okay, so today I'm gonna have lunch, but next for lunch. <laughs> and the little child is like, oh, Now here, 
Anyway, so, okay, so I wanted to show you a little bit of the needs. I'm not going to go into deeper. Uh, Elliot is going to have lessons about this. So, we can. So, but it was mainly about get to know your students, learn about the group you're going you're gonna to teach. Uh, Arton, 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 I don't know if you're going to have a nine or five year old, uh, five year old child or a 10 year old child. You know, learn about him, what he likes, uh, what are his ha hobbies, and try to start with these things. And then, you will see. For example, if I know what he's liking, how can I implement it in process of learning him? Is it possible? What does he like? Uh, flying simulator, for example. Flying simulator? <laughs> yes, he's into like uh, uh, planes. Okay. Do you know how many parts does a plane have? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he knows them? Probably not. Do you think he's interested? Yes. You got the answer. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> so that's what, what uh, so we spoke about get out of your comfort zone, get to know your uh, students and their needs and, or expectations. Expectations, we're talking about adults, because adults have expectations, as my sweetheart here. Meet the students' needs. Uh, no problem. No problem. Meet the, meet the students' needs and get them motivated, okay? So, for example, your friend, your, your little student, he loves planes, and if you're gonna bring him a model of plane, is he gonna be excited? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does he wanna learn about that? Probably. Probably. And if you play him a song about planes, a catchy, funky song about planes? Oh, that, that's a good idea. That's a good idea, isn't it? Okay. So. Here, just a couple of you. And the rest, we can take a picture. Okay, so if a child can't learn the way we teach, maybe we should teach the way they learn. So, and uh, what do you think if you want to teach your little student about uh, dancing? Uh, because you're a ballet dancer, for example, and you want to teach him ballet. Is he going to be interested? In teaching, uh, in, in dancing ballet? I mean, it's If you're gonna be flying a lot, maybe. <laughs> no, no, he won't. He won't like the lessons with you. He won't want to learn with you. Because you don't understand him. The best way to teach somebody something is to have them think they're learning something else. So if you wanna teach him English, that's your main goal. And he's learning about? Planes. Planes. Ah, not one. Ah. Um, Jacob. Victor, I was teaching them Hungarian. Well, actually, I was, what was I teaching them? Greetings, I was teaching them adjectives, I was teaching them numbers, nouns. Well, I, by the way, many people told me you cheated. <laughs> do you, do you, wh where are you from? From Nova Zambia. Ah, cheater, cheater, cheater. You were not supposed to raise your hand, but I'm very happy you did. But I don't know, I <laughs> Now you know some. Now you know some. Okay. But what was his advantage? To what, for Jacob, where are you from? Nita. Okay, well, you can. But all right. Um, the girls, where was Sofia Here. from? Ukraine. Ukraine. What was his advantage over uh, Sofia? Well, most probable. <laughs> People talk in the shop, sometimes you hear this, you hear that. And, uh, so he has already heard Hungarian before several times, which Sofia hasn't. So uh, that's the next one is going to be, I don't know if anybody knows, because I don't know right now, but Eric is going to tell me. Use creativity and get them to learn more. Here it comes, the creativity. I believe if we are able to find a way to value creativity in education, we will ignite joy in teaching. Now, we will later on learn that creativity is fun, is play, is joy. And how are you, how do you want to learn, or how do you want to teach my child how to dance? Am I supposed to pay you for playing? Am I supposed to 
three for me. That was, I've heard this so many times. So many times. So I believe if we are able to find a way to value creativity in education, we will ignite joy in teaching. And we'll, unless we don't value, Jan Amos Komensky said hundreds of years ago that we should teach through play. He knew it. I know. No, no, no. It's not the way. Sit down. Open your books. Let's do it. How do we know that? <laughs> now, this is a very interesting guy. We're going to watch a short video about him. We're going to talk about him from him. Teaching for creativity involves teaching creatively. There are three related tasks in teaching for creativity. Encouraging, identifying, and fostering. Not big, uh, not big For example, I think, uh, for example, teenagers. I think I, I don't work too much with teenagers, so I'm not, I'm not considering myself being you know, an, an expert talking about that. So please take this with a grain of salt. But I think they like to be creative. For example, Michael said that when they uh, need to make videos and uh, some pictures, anything, well, it, it, they get the spark and they want to do it. So, so when we see creativity in a child, first of all, we should encourage that. Oh, okay, show me again, show me again, show me again. Which means, and then we will we will identify identify better what he likes, how he perceives it, where is his creativity, and we can individualize our approach to the child. And then we have to motivate and foster it by telling them to do it more and more and more. Now, for example, Jacob, if you have a defender, you know he's a very good skilled defender, and but he's not really good in the offense, but in the, in the defense, he's brilliant. Are you going to be pushing him and pushing him and pushing him and pushing him to score no. goals and into those positions? No. Well, sometimes it's good because he might get into that position, but it's not the main task of his in the team, right? Or no. So you might sometimes give him the position of training or something. Uh, not much. Not much, but that's what I'm yeah. saying. Not much. That's not your priority. Okay, because that's you're not encouraging and fostering that what he's good. Your defense is better. Okay, you get that one. Let's move on. So the last one. Let them use the knowledge you provided them to get what they inspired for. I don't know if I'm a good or a bad teacher. It's not up to me to decide. A good teacher can inspire hope, ignite the imagination, and instill a love of learning. If I put any kind of picture into you today, it's going to stuck with you at least for the next one or two days. And maybe you will remember, oh, this crazy guy who was teaching us a new If I did something and achieved something, it makes sense. My, my, my being here was meaningful. And that's why I came here. <laughs> and we have to motivate our students. Our main goal is not how much I can teach, but how I can motivate the child. Because maybe, but I'm just saying maybe, little Mary, when she had lessons with me, she was sweet, I, I loved her, she was great. If I sparked and motivated her further to you know, work on English, and if Steve, together with Steve, we, did, we made it, we did it, and I know she watched the videos, it was all worth it. Oh, and, and excuse me, and excuse me. And there's a very important part of this sentence. Motivation is what gets you started. So when I motivate, for example, someone from you to try out teaching, that's great. But habit is what keeps you going. So if you find creativity or something in a child, you have to help him and motivate him and encourage him to do it again and again and again and again and then the le learning process will be something that's automatic, enjoy, and it's not forceful. For example, we in our courses, uh, many people are surprised that our children, Martin, right or wrong, like to do their homeworks, right or wrong. Not all of them, but yeah. many. Yeah. Not all of them, but many. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm doing.
doing, or we, what we are doing, we are creating a habit of doing your homework. We are motivating them, we have our motivational system, but that's about something else. So, uh, no, 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 no. Please, excuse me. So, so now I'm gonna try to, uh,
Okay? So that was about what is holding you back, find the meaning, and get it done. And let's talk about creativity. It's going to be a little bit more positive. Okay? So creativity is that intelligence having fun. That's what it is. You just need to have fun. You are intelligent already. And your children are intelligent. And voila, they're more intelligent than you. More intelligent than you. Your just ego would never accept it. But that's the way it is. Now, a little bit more about creativity. Creativity is experimenting, growing, taking risks, breaking rules, making mistakes, and having fun. Who does this remind? Experimenting, growing, taking risks. Don't go there, or you will hurt yourself. You're going to break your leg. Making, breaking rules. I'm going to do it anyway. Or don't open the door. Don't open the door. Don't open the door. What do you think? The child will eventually open the door. That yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So it's about children. They make mistakes. They have fun. They break the rules. That's what the rules are for. And our task is to show them that I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't just go this room. Just keep it here. But if, you go, if you're going to, all right. But if you, you know, break your leg, I told you. Well, obviously. <laughs>
Sometimes I sometimes I envy these guys. They are crazy, but they, it's you can say and tell that these are teachers uh, by heart and soul. And she's actually an English teacher. She studied yeah. Slovak and English. Yeah. She studies, study, study, study. Okay. So that's one more. And for those of you, well, I'm I'm recommending this thing that I've tried and I can tell you. And there's one more for adults that if you want, would like to try out, please one more. There's going to, there's a direct method for English. Direct method is a teaching approach which is direct. So you work with ask, uh, you work with questions and answers. There are different opinions on this method. Some people love it, some people hate it, but it's, you know, some people love me and hate me. Like it's all with everything, nothing is, you know, black and white, well, well, it's what, I, what, I, what I'm saying is, I personally use this method for over seven years, and I understood the positive parts and the techniques in it. It's not good for everything. It's not good for, for example, more advanced students or preparations for exams and so on. But if you want somebody, if you want to make someone speak, and he's a complete beginner, it's useful. It can be useful. So. So that's my advice for those of you who would like to see some examples of creativity. Okay. Now, about creativity, this is, uh, I'm the ambassador for What's English for the region of Nitra, and I wanted to show you this uh, guy, I wanted to show you his video. Unfortunately, I don't have internet, so I can't. Steve Watts. Uh, today, we are supposed to have a short conversation with him, a very short conversation because he's very busy. If you want, check out a couple of his videos, uh, especially look at the methodological videos, for example, when he introduces the method and he talks about it. A unique thing, a feature about this method is that in this methodology, there's a real person. So the great thing that we have, me and my colleagues, uh, that we are never alone. We always have, we always have Steve by, by our side, either in videos or in books. Um, I didn't bring anything to you because I'm not, I'm not promoting anything. Yeah, well, we've got one book here that they can fit for me. But I'm going to show you just some parts of the book so you see how creativ creativity is uh, mm, represented also in books and what the limitations of the brain of small children allow, well, mm, not allow us, but allow, allow us less compared with uh, older children. So here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors, and these are uh, eight books. So this method is based from children from three years till 11 years, all the way. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples. Uh, there, there are materials to it. Here we've been at uh, <laughs> training with Steve, great guy as well, and there are trainings and so on. So, you know, you can think of, you. I wanna, I wanna try out thinking, uh, teaching, but I don't know how, blah, 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 blah. Okay, don't waste your time. Come out to one, someone who can help you. And I'm looking for people I can help. So that's it. It's going to be a win-win. So wow, yellow. This is for three and four-year-old children. Look at that. You can just, I want you to imagine for a moment how the creativity also in the books is evolving. Okay, so this is yellow book. Next one is green. Oh, excuse me. Go back for a moment. As you can see, no reading. No writing, simple coloring, simple matching, nothing complicated, but we're practicing and we are talking about the picture. Okay, then we have, wow, green, pop. There are more elements to it, okay? No writing still, but we are getting to know more of the written language. That's the first graders. All right, second graders. Still more reading, 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 and then some, some writing pops up, just a very little, one, two words, nothing too much, not too much, okay? <laughs> then we're gonna go to the bronze book. That's for the third grader. Well, there's way more, and there are more pages to one unit. What you've seen before were all from one unit. Now, we've got eight pages in one unit. So there's a lot of things going on. There's a, tra tra a transcript of a song, there's a, there's a grammar explained in a funny way, and uh, that's all. Silver, going further, even more, even more complex. The, here, the grammar, uh, uh, can we go one slide back, please? 
the grammar was don't and doesn't, yeah, here in this unit. And in the next one, we've got the comparatives. Yeah, long, longer, the longest. The tall, taller, the tallest. Scary, scary, the square. So two, sil so two syllabic and one syllabic ad adjectives and why. So, and all of these examples I showed you were from the same unit. So it was all about animals. And uh, I mean, like if I had to create something like this, how could I, or how could I gather the information? Almost impossible. These are years and years and years of practice of several people. Not only Steve, huh? but he did it on own. But he's the face, and if you see his videos, they're gonna be useful. Okay, so that was about creativity and teaching or learning where to start. We're gonna end with this one. Very important, teaching is listening. Learning is talking. Again, again, teaching is listening, learning is talking. If I teach, I listen, and when they learn, they talk. Think about it. Think about it. When we teach, uh, we have to listen to the children, uh, what they want to teach, and uh, what they want to learn, and what they who they are, and uh, when we are learning, we have to talk to learn something. Very good. Uh, I was, uh, just one question, guys. <laughs> when we had the lesson together on Monday, was I asking you what do you want to learn about? No. <laughs> so, what am I talking about here? <laughs> no. But did you, did you learn? Was it fun? Yes. Would you like to have another lesson like that? Yes. Well, I motivated them. Okay? But teaching is listening. When we, for example, practice, and I give them, and I was asking them, do, do you remember those of you who were here when the guys were asking about how is the guy in the picture? Or, or no, what is he doing? Michinal, uh, Michinal, uh, Ugral, uh, <laughs> they, they were making questions and I was listening to them. I was listening whether they were doing it correctly and what did I do when he gave a, qu a great question or a correct question? I gave him the answer and then I praised him. I praised him. So teaching is not only listening. First we have to demonstrate but it's important to let the people speak because otherwise it's only me, okay. Now it's a presentation, it's a little bit different, but from time to time they allow you to interact with me. And don't forget, teaching and learning are two sides of the same coin. So whenever you're gonna teach, you say, I, I wanna try it out. You're gonna be learning. And whenever your students are going to be learning, they're gonna be teaching you. So it's, it's vice versa, they're human beings. And you will see what works. Like for example, if I saw that they are not capable of saying who is he or what is he doing, then, then, then I, maybe I wouldn't be pushing it and I would go to another, maybe a more a simpler version or, or something. Okay? Because I was listening to them and I was learning what works on them and what doesn't work. So, Teaching and learning, you are getting, it's a win-win. And if you don't win, you learn. Hi. So, last quote, I think. Who dares to teach must never cease to learn. Why? Because we, times are evolving. I was asking uh, Andreika, children 20, 30 years ago, were they different than they are now? Do we need to use different approaches than now? If you take a 10-year-old child, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and a 10-year-old child now, is there a slight difference? Well, children don't change. Maybe psycho psychologically, they're not different, but they got some extra help in the pocket. And that, and that changes a lot in the brain. 
So originally they are the same, but it's the environment that changes them. And, it, and we can ask the question, what do you want? The children that are growing right now are going to be influenced by gamers, uh, TikTok influencers, um, it's Instagrammers, or by you. You can choose. But I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that if you leave those children, if you say, I don't care about them, one way, sooner or later, it's going to get back to us. It's going to be like a freaking boomerang. And that's the different responsibility that you as teachers who are learning or, st or studying to become teachers, at least you're taking the space, those of you who don't want to do it, want to get the paper, and I'm not going to do it any, any, uh, any, anymore. And I'm not saying be a teacher till the, till the rest of your life, but at least while you're studying, give it a try. And maybe at the end of the day you don't like it. I didn't want to be a teacher when I started teaching. I wanted to rent cars. <laughs> And I ended up here. So, <laughs> who dares to teach must never cease to learn. And we learn 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, 50% of what we both hear and see, 70% of what is discussed, 80% of what we experience personally, and 95% of what we teach to someone else. Do the math. How much time do you want to spend learning? Right. And by taking into consideration your brain, yeah? Because you see that it's different in the different, uh, it reacts differently to different inputs. And the best way to learn is to do the, uh, yeah, so the best way to learn, uh, the best way to learn is to do, and the worst way to teach is to talk. So I think I'm, uh, I have been talking enough. Take a look. I hope I have no other slides there. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Thank Just you. Just on time. Just on time? Uh, so that was how to make language learning meaningful and creative. I hope it was useful. My name was Miroslav Krishnak. Uh, I'm from Language Planet, if you want. Uh, you know, get in touch with me. I will be happy to answer your questions. I will be happy to meet with you. We are here in Nitra. Uh, there, there is a great possibility that some of you who want to try it out is here. I'm not going to talk about it right now, but I have some great possibilities for those of you who would like to try it out. Uh, we will see how it works out. And the last thing, I started teaching English in 2008. That's when I started as a student. And in 2011, I established Language Planet. And from a nobody from Shkurova, I'm just a teacher, enthusiastic. I was living for what I believed in. I got the award at top language school six times in the past six years. Twice. We were third, twice we were second, and twice we were first. And the last one, 2021. Oh, these all were in the region of Nitra, okay? All, all five, all first five were in the region of Nitra, but the last one, we won the whole Slovak school. I'm not saying this to brag about myself. I'm humble about what we have achieved because there was loads of hard work in it. And to be honest, uh, do you know what is the top moment of my life that I'm going to show to my parents? <laughs> <laughs> that regardless of that, I am able to talk to you today. And I greatly, greatly thank to Elenka and to Mary for this chance. I thank you for listening to me. And I really, really hope that maybe, maybe some of you will decide just to give it a try and maybe we can do some meaningful and creative things together. So thank you very much.